Hello everybody, what's up, what's going on, and welcome to the 57th episode of Raptors of One. So guys, today I want to talk about how deep our team is. And I'm going to use the Boston game, the preseason game that just happened, and I'm going to use that to prove my point. So without any further ado, let's get it. So guys, I didn't get to watch the game. But that's because I have things to do, you know, life happens, but hey, you know, family's priority. We got to do what we got to do for our family. So that's all good. But hey, that's what the highlights are for. And so I got to watch the highlights. Of course, I watched the, I checked out the uh, box score and the stats. And I got to say, man, this was not what I expected. <laughs> um, I, I did, before the game had started, I was expecting the Raptors to win this. And the reasons for that was because A, they didn't have their head coach anymore. Uh, his the Boston Celtics head coach being Ime Ujo. Uh, so I don't want to butcher his name, but you know who the head coach is. There you go. You can see who he is. Um, yeah, he was he was caught up in a scandal. You know, um, doing a little uh, fraternizing with the Boston Celtics staff. You know, uh, consensual, right? But at the same time, not professional, right? Uh, they, there's that old saying, you don't crap where you eat. He did exactly that. To make matters worse, he was even married. Again, I'm not going to talk about the morality of how this looks like. And again, at the end of the day, it was consensual to adults, but not professional. So he was suspended from being the coach of the Boston Celtics for this whole season. Ouch. Now, does that mean he's going to coach in the playoffs? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you can tell me in the comment section. Now, the other reason being uh, Jalen Brown. Uh, if you guys were kind of monitoring social media during the off offseason, uh, especially around the Kevin Durant sweepstakes, uh, there were some rumblings about Jalen Brown and possibly him being part of a trade package to get Kevin Durant to the Boston Celtics. That news was going around quite a bit. Uh, Jalen Brown, all he had to say was just SMH. Shaking my head. Um... Now, of course, you know, he probably was disgruntled. So I thought, you know what? He's probably going to be like, man, forget this organization. I want to take my talent somewhere else. I am going to be tanking this season hard. Well, he came out and he balled this game. He played very well in this game. Anyway, the Raptors won, but it was an overtime win. That too in a preseason game. Now, this says quite a bit about the Raptors. If you look at the box score and if you, if you were watching the game, Raptors fans, <laughs> some of your spheres were probably coming true like, oh, here we go, classic Raptors, you know, we, we can beat the teams we can beat, but when we, we need to beat the teams that we need to beat to make that statement, to take that next step, it ain't gonna happen. Well, it surely looked like that for the first three quarters. And I have to say, the Boston Celtics, man, uh, when I was watching the highlights, <laughs> again, and this is where the whole, the, 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 the um, the American media bias comes in. You look at the highlights and you're thinking, wow, I know the Raptors won this one, but the highlights seem to be coming more from the Boston Celtics. They're, they're, they're showcasing a lot of the highlights from the Boston Celtics. Now, again, I didn't watch the game and maybe this was one of those grinded out games where the Raptors, they scored the points, but it wasn't as highlight worthy, uh, as the Boston Celtics seem to have shown. But we cannot rule out the U.S. media bias. And I had to say, I was like, the way they were showing the highlights, I'm like, how did the Raptors win this game? So, and, and I kid you not, even some of the highlights while I was watching it, they were showing the score. I was like, okay, well, when did the Raptors catch up? And you see the point differential. You're like, okay, well, the Raptors caught up somehow. Yes, you know, the Boston, they're, they're killing us on the three-point arc. You know, they're, they're killing us on the pick and rolls. That's all great. But we're, we're cutting that gap. You gotta, you gotta, you're telling me that we, when we were cutting that gap, we didn't have any highlight worthy plays? Uh -uh. I don't believe that for a single minute. This is just typical US media bias. I'm just gonna chalk it up to that. Again, this is just my opinion. If you guys think otherwise, hit that comment section. And obviously, you know where I'm gonna segue this into. If you like my content, of course, hit that thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more of this, content that I have on my channel, 
For your view and pleasure, of course, hit that subscribe button and join the Raptors in one family. Whether you're a Raptors fan or not, you are more than welcome. All right, so coming back to the game, um, yeah, this, what brought us back in this game? Even after being led for the first three quarters, and I have to say the first quarter, you know, it could have been anybody's game, but the Boston Celtics led the first quarter. The second and the third quarter, woo, it was like, it was going to be a runaway game for the Boston Celtics. And, you know, it, this was at the Garden. So I was like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have chalked this one up to the Raptors winning it. But hey, that's the reason why I called those Raptors in one. Because I always pick the Raptors to win. Game one, if there's only one of one, Raptors winning it. In one, baby. Anyway, you know, um, the Raptors were being led for the first three quarters. And then in the fourth quarter, that's where we started to clean things up a little bit. Uh, we started to crank up the defense again a little bit. You know, now we're starting to distribute the ball and we're not being selfish any anymore. And that's one of the main things coach Nick Nurse preaches all the time. It's not enough to just get the best shot. You gotta, you gotta move the ball around. You move the ball around, you move the defense around. It's simple, isn't it? And so that's what happened. And guess what? It was the bench. The bench brought us back into this game. They were playing unselfish. They were playing the basketball that Nick Nurse wanted to see. So that was a welcome sight. That was amazing to see that. And of course, because of that, we forced the, we forced the overtime. And then in the overtime, we took care of business. Again, who helped us win this game? The bench. So I gotta say, this, this is why I say, again, I'm not trying to jump ahead, jump the gun here just yet. But the past two games, if there are any indication, our team is deep. And you know what? Nick Nurse has a wonderful problem on his hands right now. Now he's got to decide who makes the cut and who doesn't. But you know what? The bench in general, they're a pretty good team. Even the ones who don't make the cut, that's okay, baby. You're going to get some time in Raptors 9-5. Occasionally, you'll get a few games here and there, and you know injuries is part of the deal in the season, in this 82-game season. So you will get your opportunities to come and showcase your talents on the court. But let's be patient, and let's just trust our coach, because our coach knows exactly what he's doing. The player that I was impressed with uh, from the highlights that I had seen, I got to single out Josh Jackson, man. Uh, I got to admit, I did not know anything about Josh Jackson when we picked him up. Uh, usually, if it's a notable pickup, you may have noticed from my channel, of course, if you have subscribed from my previous episodes, that I will mention about that trade, aka the Otto Porter pickup, the possible Kevin Durant pickup that could have happened but didn't, and the Rico Hines signing. So, you know, I, I mentioned these things. And I didn't for Josh Jackson because, again, I didn't know too much about him. And I was like, you know what, let me see what this kid can do. And he impressed me. He's impressed me in these two preseason games. Mind you, it's just a preseason. And of course, he knows what's on the line. A roster spot. But, if he's going to keep playing and helping us out on the defensive end, on the offensive end, especially when we need that offense, he came out, man. He came out. So, I got to say, man, Josh Jackson makes the cut. He definitely makes the cut. So anyway, overtime win. Raptors win in the Garden. In a preseason game, man, that did not look like a preseason game at all. Everybody was playing serious, especially the Boston starters, man. And this time, unlike the previous preseason game, the starters, they logged in 20-plus minutes. But hey, we still kept it under that 30. Just like I had mentioned in my previous episodes, we got to keep the starters under 30 for the preseason. We can't, we can't, this is just a shake the cobwebs and the rust off. Done. That's it. But hey, the bench... They did exactly what they were supposed to do. They're making a case for themselves for that roster spot. This is a nice problem for Nick Nurse to have, even for Masai and Bobby, if they have some input. So that's it tonight, guys. The Raptors are taking on Houston Rockets, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I cannot wait for this game. Let's see what the bench can do even in this game, man. You know, if anything, preseason, I say, I don't care what the starters do. I want to see what the bench can do. And if the bench can do a lot, 
that is going to dictate how the season's going to look like. So that's all I got for today, folks. Again, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And of course, if you want to subscribe and watch my more entertaining content that I have for your viewing pleasure, of course, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Join the Raptors and Warren family. And of course, hit that comment section. So until next time, I'm out.